Hello and welcome back to Light My Way. We will be continuing where we left off, which, if you recall, is after Lucian discovered that the lights that he was seeing are actually called aspects and that everyone has one, but not everyone can see them or interact with them. Not only that, but not everyone's aspect or... No, no, no. Not everyone who has one is able to do something with it and that he is what is known as a um, equalizer it is an equalizer's I guess job you know uh, to balance out a person's emotions so that if they are feeling too angry or too happy or too sad or something they sort of absorb that sort of excess of emotion in order to quote unquote equalize the person that the, so that they don't um become too much of that emotion i guess and it does have its pros and cons as was explained in the previous portion um but it also has a bit of like a like that sounds a little weird if you ask me Anyways, um, so the headmistress, I guess, the dean of the university, explained this to Lucian, but then she ended up knocking him out after he was trying to get some answers, and then after what he heard, he was like, yeah, you know what, I'm, I, I want to go now. But um, she knocked him out. So now two mysterious new people are going to show up and apparently experiment on him or something in order to find out what's going on with him, because apparently everyone is supposed to only have one aspect, and Lucian here has thousands of them. So that is very abnormal. So yeah, anyways, so without further ado, let us continue Light My Way. Chapter 4, Displacement. I snap my eyes open, gasping for air as I wake up in the same fancy office, but now tied to a chair. A zebra, an eagle, and the horrible panther are having an intense discussion. These folks captured me. They haven't noticed me awake yet, although I did just take a breath as if my life depended on it, and maybe it does. These ropes are so tight, every movement that I make scratches deep through my fur down to my skin. I can't reach with my claws to rip it up. They made sure of that. My arms are secured as tight as they could ever be, which tells me that whoever did this knew exactly what they were doing. It's like an army knot. Not that I've ever seen one, but it feels too precise, the tie to be anything else. These forks are still talking. I glance at them and at the door, which is without a doubt locked tight. And to top it off, the two new folks have no aspect around them, either. Of all of the things to be scared of, this is the one that's creeping me out the most. I say we kill him. Oh, quit it, James. And stop being so dramatic. You wouldn't hurt anyone here, let alone kill someone. Well, we've watched him for the past six hours and have no idea what he is or what he's capable of. I've been out for six hours? What in the world did that panther shoot me up with? The last thing that I remember is a sharp pinch of the needle, then... nothing. He's incapacitated. We can take our time to study him and figure things out. Gentle first, let's hear the fox out. He's listening in as it is. I regret going to that stupid eye test so much. Would you like some water, Mr. Volps? My mouth stays shut, but not for long. The dryness in my throat is getting the better of me. Yes. I do apologize for knocking you out, but it had to be done. The panther brings a cup next to my snout. I smell the water inside before gulping it down, the zebra and the eagle raising an eyebrow at that. I know that there is no point in them poisoning me or knocking me out again, yet I couldn't drink without being first sure of what it could be inside. Oh my fur, I need to calm down already, and these folks have a lot to answer for. Why did you do that to me? You wanted to run away, which didn't exactly help with your situation. 
And that's a bad thing. You told me that I'd be a test subject for who knows what. Shut up, you little brat. Do you even understand why you're here? No, I don't. Who are you and why am I tied up? What's wrong with all of you? I want to talk to my parents. Mr. Volps, we're here to discuss some important matters. Please try to relax and answer our questions honestly. Is that alright? The eagle smiles at me, touching my shoulder, his wings spreading wide on both sides with a short flutter. His touch is how Darius made me feel this one time, but this is much more intense, almost hypnotizing. I kick at him trying to free myself from the chair, but he isn't bothering at all, still sticking with his stupid, vexing smile. I would scream, but I see the syringe on the desk. I doubt that there's anybody around anymore aside from us. The eagle touches me on both shoulders again after I settle down, his eyes piercing through my entire being. Why are you at this school? What do you mean, why? I got accepted here for astrophysics. Cut the crap, kid. Are you TSG? TSG? He doesn't know what it is. How could he know that? Unless... He's a cardinal. He'll know if I'm lying. I'm saved. He could be a sleeper agent. I know. I'm not a sleeper agent. Clever try. You know I'm a cardinal, but that wouldn't do you any good. Even I can't know if you're telling the actual truth about that. You could have gotten enough training to bypass me on this. We looked at his records and his parents' records. Aside from all of them studying here, there is no connection to TSG whatsoever. What's TSG? As if you don't know. The Sacred Guard. A radical carnivore group. They devour other folk for both sport and consumption. My throat closes up hearing that. I knew those groups existed, but I never cared much about them since Aurora is... Well, Aurora. Nobody talks about that stuff there. But these folks think that I'm one of them. Those... Fiends. This is wrong on so many levels. Why would they do that? We have food made in labs. Tyranon is a big exporter. Connecting the dots now, pup? Did you come here to sabotage the supply chain? What? No. I've eaten lab meat my entire life. The Grand Unification stopped carnivores from eating other folk. Not all of them. There is a short pause after the zebra said that. The panther and the eagle are both looking away. The mood has gotten very dark, very fast. James, would you like some... Fuck the tea, Catherine. And fuck you too, Aster. Do you think staring at the ground and being quiet for a few seconds is going to fix anything? Call me when the fox is talking. The zebra's snout comes towards me, while his resentful stare and angry breaths move my eyes, through sheer willpower, to the ceiling. He slams the door on his way out, leaving me with the other two folk who are still not saying a word. The tomb-like silence goes on for a few more minutes, and I can only hear my heart pulsating in my throat from the confusion around me. He's right. I know. But this is not only about him anymore. It's about everyone. Mr. Volps, I need you to tell me everything about yourself. Start from the beginning. Since I arrived in Tyrannon? Since you were born. Everything you can remember about your life. Start from there. The eagle's grip is tightening and his eyes become even more intense than a few minutes ago. The panther takes a chair and sits next to us. I look around, but there is no way out. I'm trapped here, but this is just a mistake. And if anything, my story will prove my innocence. After what seems like hours, but in reality only took not more than 30 minutes, I got to where we are now. I rushed through some of the details, but I'm sure that they mostly care about the aspect stuff. This has to be the fastest explanation of my entire life that I could have ever told anyone. I'm a little out of breath from the continuous talking. Go back to the part where you talked about your neighbor. My nose is getting red. He knew I was lying, but I thought that he could let it go. Does he want me to spell everything out for him? Can he use his imagination for this part? I've told you everything that I know. Why are you bothering with lies at this point? This is so humiliating. Mr. Cliffs? The wolf pops in looking at nothing in particular but avoiding our part of the room. He must know that I'm being tied up, yet he isn't doing anything to help me. 
He's only nice on the outside, it seems. Yes, Miss Refulgence? Request a student Atlas Longfan to report to my office regardless of where he is. This is urgent. Do speak through the speakers now. Of course, right away. Why do you need him to be here? If you're not going to tell us the truth, he will. The panther starts untying me and I hear her words as if they were being hammered into my skull. Let's move to the front of my desk. Do try not to make a scene. Not a single word out of you. Understood? Now that my hands are free, a fleeting thought of escape crosses my mind. However, it's overwhelmed by a gripping terror that lasts no more than a few seconds. This must be the panther's doing. I can't explain it, but it must be her. And where would I even go if I could bolt out the door? The university sprawls out like a labyrinth, and every corner is under the control of Miss Refulgence. There is no place to run, and why should I do it? I've done nothing wrong. This has to be a monumental misunderstanding, a situation blown out of proportion. I remind myself to stay calm, to wait for Atlas. He'll sort this out. He has to. But how can he if he has no idea what aspects are? What are they going to do to him? My heart beats faster at that thought, while my anxiety and anticipation presses out on my lungs, making my breaths go from shallow to deep to panicky. Just when my thoughts begin to spiral, there is a burst of light that fills the room with a warm, bright amber glow that can only belong to one folk. I look up, and my mouth opens wide as I witness for the first time in my life Atlas's aspect and its true form. What a majestic tiger. Oh my fur. That's so beautiful. Unmistakable and radiant. How can he even be more handsome now? Focus. I didn't see aspects around the zebra or the eagle. They're the same as a panther. I would like to think more about these things, but Atlas's face when he sees me without sunglasses? Priceless. Not much different from my face when I saw his mountain-like aspect walking through that door. Relief floods through me, though, a tide of hope rising against the worries that have bogged me down since I went to that stupid eye test. The tiger's presence alone is enough to shift the atmosphere, to bring a sense of normalcy to this bizarre and unsettling situation. Should I tell Alice that I'm being held against my will? No. Or... He would try to get me out, but what if he's upset with me? No. He would never abandon me like that. I turn to Atlas wanting to explain myself, but I notice the syringe from the desk is gone. What am I even thinking? I'll just drag him into this mess with me. It's best if I keep my cool for now, see where things are headed first. Mr. Longfan, welcome. Please take a seat. This is a simple questionnaire we ask our elite students. Here's a glass of water. It might take a while. Atlas looks at me, and in his confusion is clear. He's wondering why I'm here, not being an elite and all, but he doesn't question it out loud and takes the chair next to me as instructed. He picks up the water and takes a sip. The eagle then steps closer to Atlas, placing a paw on his forehead. In an instant, Atlas's body goes limp, his control slipping away. He starts to slide off the chair, but the eagle and the panther move to catch him, propping him back up. The whole scene unfolds in a swift and surreal fashion, leaving me both alarmed and baffled. What did you do to him? He's fine. How much does this tiger eat anyway? He feels like he's twice my size. Just ask him about what we need to know. Mr. Longfang, do you know what TSG is? The tiger tries to form a coherent reply, but his words come out mumbled and slurred, a thin line of drool trickling out the corner of his mouth. His usual composure is now replaced by a dazed, almost a vacant expression. It's a jarring sight seeing Atlas who is the assertive and controlled type, reduced to this disorientated state. Yes. I can't believe it. Atlas? He's part of that? It can't be. No. I refuse to believe this. And there it is. Undeniable proof. The Silver Gorgon Gargantuans. Wonderful. That's our basketball team from Biscar. They must have a match to play with them. This was a waste of time, Catherine. Tell that to James. They both sit in silence for a few seconds again, 
This is the second time that it's happened, and there's the same reaction. What's going on with that zebra? Are we done with the fox? The panther looks at me and with her inquisitive eyes, my tail puffing itself out into direct stiffness. This panther is doing this on purpose each chance that she gets. The fear is short-lived, but it crawls and creeps into every hair on my fur. For now, finish up with this tiger and then we'll have a short chat with Mr. Volks. Mr. Longfan, you came here to answer a questionnaire. You're going to leave now having had satisfied results. You are not to mention this to anyone else, understood? Yes, yes. He's barely sitting up straight. How is he even going to be able to walk? Both teachers look at me as if I insulted them. I turn away, escaping their silencing looks. With one touch on his forehead, Atlas gets up, bows, and leaves the office. His aspect is still frozen still. It's not moving at all. This aster did something so powerful to Atlas that I am afraid to even know what it is. Mr. Volts, I believe that you want to know the entire story. We can have that conversation now, or you can leave and we can continue tomorrow. I want to apologize for the way that you have been treated. Our concern is well-founded, and we kindly ask that you believe that we have no intention of hurting you unless you would have proven to be part of the TSG. She's not mincing words at all. They would have imprisoned me, who knows where, and interrogated or even tortured me if I were part of this sacred guard. My arms and legs are starting to give out. I have been so tense this whole time now, and hearing that I can leave, my body is shutting down instead of trying to sprint away. I would like to go to my dorm and sleep. There is a note for the cafeteria. I will call ahead and you can pick up the food for yourself. Do not bother going to class tomorrow. It will report here every morning. I can't keep it up anymore. Whatever she's saying is a blur. There is nothing else than sleep that I need now. Let me go already. Yes, I understand. Uh, tomorrow morning, here. My grip on reality is fading. My eyelids are pushing themselves down. And if it weren't for my grumbling stomach, I think that I would be able to sleep right away. How do I even get to? Aster? The eagle grabs me, holding my chin up with a firm grip so that I can look him in the eyes. I grab onto his arm with an immediate reflex. Perhaps he can carry me. Look right above me and keep your eyes open. Breathe in and out. In just a few seconds, I rebound to my old self, brimming with energy and feeling more refreshed than I have in ages, yet the eagle's grip remains firm, not letting me go. I I'm fine now. Thank you. No answer. His eyes are turning white and his grip is tightening. He's trying to choke me. I struggle against his iron grip, squirming and clawing at his arm, trying to push him away but his strength is overpowering me with ease. I gasp for air, panicked out of my mind, my eyes searching out the panther, but she's gone. More panic, more fear. When did she get to be next to me? Her eyes widen as she observes the eagle's trance-like state. She steps back, clasping her paws together and releases a prolonged, heavy sigh. A sense of dread is in the air, panic pushing into me every passing moment. I start crying, as does the eagle who lets go of me, jumping back and screaming in horror. We're both sweating and trembling from what happened. Cat? Why the fuck would you do that? You kept giving him more and more of your aspect. I saw it scream in pain. The eagle looks at me, then at his arm that I clawed at. Trying to get up doesn't go well for him. His feet falter and he hits the ground again. I swear I didn't do it on purpose. You have to believe me. At this point, it could be anything. A few tries later, the eagle is up again, turning to me with what looks like he wants to punch me in the face, his demeanor changing once he's in front of me. Mm. I think that's enough for today, Catherine. Whatever occurred here is an anomaly to be sure, but this time, I saw through him. He's not a threat to us. Your word is all I need. You have it. Then you are free to go, Mr. Volps. I will see you here tomorrow morning as we discussed. I would remind you not to try anything stupid. It would be best if you go to your dorm room and 
Come back here tomorrow morning. There is nothing to fear. She says that like I didn't just feel my mind lose its grip on itself a few minutes ago. She opens a door to her office and I step out without saying another word, only nodding in agreement. I am done with today. With everything and everyone. A moment ago, I was filled with energy and it's like I'm holding an even bigger boulder over my head. Kieran looks at me with concern, but I don't have the patience to talk to him right now. He opens his mouth to say something to me, but I don't want to even hear it. After all, he's in league with these crazy folk. I... I need to get out of here. Once I am far away enough from that horrid office, my walk turns into a pacing, then running. I dash out of the building, gasping for air the moment that I step outside. I let my legs drop me down, curling into a ball and crying as hard as my eyes let me. It's no longer a joke. I didn't dream this or hallucinate it. These folks were actually going to kill me if I was part of that group. What kind of folk are they? That they openly talk about torturing me if I... I'm trying to calm down, but it's not working and the tears aren't stopping. I need to let it all out. This is so fucked. Everything is so damn fucked. Why is this happening to me? What did I do to deserve this? I hear my thoughts running amok, but now's not the time for this. I need to figure things out now. And crying on the ground here like a total loser isn't helping. I'm smart. I'm capable. I managed to get to Tyrannon, so I can figure out a way through this nightmare. First and foremost, what I need to do is get away from this place, from these horrible folk. I'll pack my stuff up and leave tonight. They think that I'll stay here after all those threats? They really are crazy. My arm hangs low from the food that I've been carrying for the past half hour. I managed to get to the cafeteria and pick up something to eat. It's gone cold by now and won't taste so good, but I got lost and thought like something wouldn't let me think straight. I had a plan, but it's so hard to focus. I assume Darius is right behind the door studying more. I'll wait for him to go to sleep and then I'll leave somewhere in the middle of the night. My parents will know what to do. I don't want to call them yet, in case these crazy folks here are already tracking my phone. Good evening, Lucian. Yo. What in all the living and dead hell is that? That's unreal, horrid, and beyond scary. The rabbit's aspect looks crazed, like it's about to go berserk at any moment. It's moving around in every which way. Those big front teeth together with its ragged look are a recipe for endless nightmares. I can barely look at it and Fabian. I wonder what the rabbit goes through daily if that's his aspect. I didn't expect him to be here as well. Maybe after that talk today about... Fabian being heard and all, Darius must have called him. Uh, hey guys, how's it going? I could only hope that my obvious tension won't evolve into a long conversation with them. After what happened today in that office, the last thing that I want is to talk more about me. We are worried about you. Dee said that you bolted out this afternoon. No books or anything with you. Are you doing alright, Foxy? The tears are coming in again, but I need to keep myself together. I can't have any more complications. And they would get even more concerned if I started babbling about aspects, since they still think that jacket meets jacket. They would think that I'm having a stroke or something if I begin to try to explain what happened to me today. They are just two nice guys who are worried about me, and I don't want to see them mixed up in this insanity. It's already bad as it is. I hope that I can get the right words out to bypass the lion's detector. I, uh, had a change in my schedule and needed to go to the headmistress's office. I'll have some interesting days ahead of me. Darius is working extra hard to figure out if I'm lying. His massive lying almost engulfs me. Even though I'm in a state of shock from what happened, I can't help but giggle on the inside at the sight of the huge lying aspect sniffing around me. It retreats to Darius taking up his usual solemn stance, giving me a quick look from time to time. 
Glad to hear. No reason to worry then. I'm uneasy about this whole thing, being able to notice someone's intentions like that. It's like I am invading Darius's mind knowing his thoughts regarding me. This is so incredibly powerful. No wonder those folk knew how to treat me and that I wouldn't react one way or the other. They untie me because they already knew that I wouldn't do anything about it. I still need to run though, even if they know something from my aspect, they didn't see me after I left the office. I'm good. Plenty of reasons to worry about, uh, just not for this particular situation. Uh, how are you Fabian? I see you're not wearing those knee pads. I'm better now. After you visited me, I felt like I've been sulking way too much. M meeting D helped. You are always welcome here. I want to apologize again for not keeping in contact. Nah, it's my fault as well. I got too much into my head and then I kind of drifted away. Forgot that I have folks that I can count on. Ain't that right, Foxy? Yep. It's like I ate a fistful of sour grapes. It sucks leaving these guys behind because they have become friends. At least the closest thing that I can name as a friend. Your eyes are super freaky. Cool, but super freaky. Look who's talking about super freaky. Uh, thanks. I got a pair of contact lenses from the office today after I had an eye exam. Yeah, D told me about it. Is that why you left in a hurry? Yes, I needed to get more information on them. And you did? Looking around the room is smooth now. Every light is balanced, sharp, not over or under saturated to speak of. It took a while, but they're calibrated. I just needed to get used to them. Being calmer helps a ton with that. Uh, they're working as they should. I can see better now. Great. I'm ahead to my dorm now. Gotta get a lot done starting tomorrow. Good to see you again, D. See ya, Foxy. Uh, good night, Fabian. And goodbye. I would like to sleep, Lucian. Today has been an interesting day for me as well. You know, regardless of the reason why you started your path, I am sure that you're going to be a great cardinal someday. I have a feeling that you'll get there. While Darius stares at me trying not to crack a smile at my encouragement, I saw his aspect smirk a tiny bit. It could be my imagination though. I'm so out of it. His aspect could even talk to me and I might not get it. You don't have to say anything if you feel uncomfortable about our discussion today. I thank you for your kind words. Have a pleasant sleep. You too. I'll go to the bathroom real quick and brush my fangs. I will do that after you then. I have forgotten since Fabian was here this entire evening. I get ready as fast as possible in the bathroom, picking out only my fang brush and my fang paste. Darius goes after me and I know that he's going to take his time with everything so I begin to pack anything important in my backpack. I turn the lights off and get in bed planning each of my steps. Once Darius falls asleep, it's go time. It's about two in the night. Darius is sleeping like a rock. His snoring is constant with a low rumble. I stay a little longer listening to the lines snoozing knowing that this is going to be the last time that I'll see him. He really is a good guy to be around. I'm sure that there are a lot of great things waiting for him. I get dressed, grab my backpack, and right before opening the door I turn around looking at Darius again. The feeling of leaving this life behind, not the best, but I did it once in Aurora to come here so I can do it again now. However, there is a nagging thought somewhere in my mind about all of this. Something's off, but I can't stay here either. There's no need. There is no telling what will happen in the morning once I go to that horrid panther again. I don't even understand why she let me go in the first place now that I got to rest for a few hours and gather my thoughts. Maybe it's some sick game those folks are playing to see how I react. But if that's the case, then I'm doing what they want me to do. Leave. Who said that? I'm imagining things because I swear that I heard someone say that I should leave. There's nobody around though. I hope I didn't wake Darius. I don't know how he'd react to me leaving. 
I guess he would try to stop me. But would he go as far as to immobilize me? He could, considering his, like, tussle with Atlas the other day. But he wouldn't do that to me. I hope. I turn to the door, reaching for the door handle again. Leave now, while you can. I turn around, claws out, swishing at the darkness. Nobody. Am I losing it? And what's with this immediate violent reaction? I've never attacked anyone in my life. First this damn equalizer crap, and now I'm hearing voices? Things can't get any worse. No, I take that back. This isn't the time to tempt fate. The hallway is silent, the bright lights blinding me for a second. There is no time to waste, though. I look around hoping that no one is awake at this hour. There might be some who are studying, so as long as I keep quiet while walking, it should be fine. I reach the base of the arch, realizing that I am doing as a voice asked me to. Maybe this is a mistake. It's fine. I must be in a state of shock to be hearing voices. It has to be my inner fears coming out. Yeah, that must be it. The panther did a number on me, and that eagle too. She has to be the reason why I'm acting like an escaped mental patient. Well, I haven't escaped yet. Once I step outside, I need to make my way to the end of the campus without any of the night guards spotting me. Run, now! I sprint without thinking, pushing open the door, leaving them to close behind me with a loud whack that freezes me mid-run. Someone heard that for sure. I look behind me, anticipating lights being turned on everywhere. Instead, more silence. Weird. I shift my focus towards the exit of the campus. Not one night guard around. Nobody thinks that one might want to run away from Tyrannon. Most folks try years in a row to get in here, not get out. There is a sinking feeling in my stomach when I reach the exit. And again, I can't put a claw on it. What is it? And what am I supposed to be feeling right now? I turn around, admiring the university. It could have been great here if I hadn't gone to one stupid eye exam. I miss my parents, though, and I know that they'll be worried when I'll show up out of the blue, but they'll take care of me, as they always have. Time to leave this place behind. I put my paws on my forehead, as if to do an army salute, which makes things weirder since I've never done something like that in my life. I also despise everything that has to do with armies. This isn't me. Of course you'd try this. My thoughts come to a sudden close, a fist smacking me right in the snout. I come to in the now familiar confines of the psychopathic Miss Refulgence's office. Starting to recall last night's events, I remember someone's powerful punch. Whoever hit me didn't hold back. My snout is swollen on one side, and touching it sends a chill of pain I instantly regret. Good morning, sunshine. How's your head? It doesn't hurt as bad as my snout. The zebra is sitting in a chair opposite of me, holding an ice pack over his fist, pressing it on it from time to time. Aw, your snout hurts. Good. Fucking idiot. I hear more insults being mumbled under the zebra's breath, his words filled with an unmistakable venom that suggests some deep-seated animosity towards me. He must hate me so much, but I don't recall ever seeing him in my life. What could I have done to this guy? I try to figure out if I know him from somewhere, but the sound of the door that opens and closes in a whirl stops my train of thoughts. Miss Refulgence's footsteps are heavy and rushed. She looks at me, eyes wide with anger. My snout twists up out of the blunt hit that I got, more pain rushing in to meet the unfortunate repeat of a few moments ago. You try to run away, you ungrateful twat. Do you know how bad this looks on you right now? Who is your contact outside? Why are you here? Who sent you to tire none? Speak, you scoundrel. She raises her paw at me, this time with her claws out. They're shining in the morning light, their sharpness making me twitch with immediate fear. I grab onto the seat of the chair, closing my eyes and await her fury to drop on me any moment now. Cat, don't. A look of disgruntled annoyance flashes on the panther's face. She must feel robbed of the chance to show how sorry she is about trusting me yesterday. I agree with Aster. His snout looks like it wants to see better days. The zebra throws his ice pack to me and I fumble to catch it, getting my claws out to be sure that it doesn't fall, 
which in turn alarms everyone in the room. I retract my claws the moment that I notice their apprehension and place the ice pack on my swollen face. The pain makes me cringe at the cold waves, but the relief I get is so good after a few seconds. Have you lost it, James? You were right to follow him. You caught him fleeing in the night like a common thief. You know well enough I have issues with foxes. But this one, I don't know. He's just a scared kid, nothing more. I look around the room, unsure if my ears are deceiving me, that zebra's on my side all of a sudden. Of all the folk, I would have not expected it to come from you. Are you scared, Mr. Volps? Lucian, is it? Yes. Are you scared, Lucian? The zebra stares at me, expecting an answer. His benevolent smile disarms me in an instant. I stammer through the first words that come out of my mouth after my thoughts stop racing. I, I don't... It's over. I can't keep it in myself anymore. I've never been strong and always needed someone to take care of me. I need Atlas here to chase these bullies away. See, Cap? What TSG member cries like that? Aster, are you hearing this? Cat, are you more upset that he didn't do as instructed? You can't scare everyone into obedience. What? No! He's crying now like a little brat to cover up his trail. Who leaves in the middle of the night after being told everything's alright? We even apologized to him. He didn't even dodge my punch. I knocked him out with one swing. What kind of TSG recruit could he be? The zebra's paw reaches out towards me and I flinch away for a second in all the confusion. He still is keeping his paw open and smiles again. There is a strong certainty in how he is as a folk. I saw a flash of green around him, but it's already gone now. My name's James Trailblaze. Nice to make your acquaintance. My face must be puffed up from the amount of tears that have been raining over my face. I look at the paw in front of me, but instead of shaking it, I grab onto the arm and jump onto the zebra's chest, gripping him tight, crying even louder. My god. He's patting the back of my head, shushing me and telling me that it's going to be okay. For the first time in the past days, I feel safe, like nothing could ever hurt me. Are you feeling better now? The question feels rhetorical, but I answer anyway. Yes, I do. D did you equalize me? Ah, you catch on quick. His voice is imbued with more warmth than before. If his behavior was a coin, I'm getting to see the other side of it. I'm so much calmer now. My paws are steady and my crying has stopped as if I've never cried to begin with. Now, can you tell us why you ran away? We all have a good idea by now, but tell us. I was scared of what you might do to me. You said that you wouldn't hurt me, but I can't know that. I don't understand any of this. You dragged me in here and then knocked me out without a care in the world. I stare at the panther who looks right back at me, indifferent to what I'm saying. She isn't phased at all by my obvious pleas for her to apologize for what she's done. There isn't a hint of remorse around that expressionless face of hers. What was I supposed to do? I don't know what you want from me. I have a thousand aspects. How should I know what that means? Why do I have them? Who in the hell is a TSG? And why am I being treated like this? I just want to study planets. There are no answers following the row of questions I presented to these kidnappers. After the brief silence that enveloped the room, the eagle decides to break the stillness. My name is Aster Havrun, Cardinal and Headmaster of Biscor University. I specialize in psychology and cardinal literature. With an almost rhetorical flair, the panther casts a glance at the eagle, her expression finally changing to what looks like an exaggerated disbelief. What? It's as good a time as any to properly introduce ourselves to the poor kid. We should have done that first, and perhaps this entire situation would not have spiraled out of control. Yes, Aster. Let's give him more information to the possible TSG sleeper agent. What an amazing plan. You know that he could have found out everything about us from a public profiles. It's not like this is classified information or that it hasn't happened before. He's somehow lifting my mood from the dreadful state that it was in since waking up in this bleary office again. I don't understand why the Panther isn't giving up on the notion of me being part of the TSG. 
She was fine with me leaving her office yesterday without so much as a fuss, even though this astrofolk assured her they am no threat to anyone. Maybe they're right, and she is upset because I disobeyed her. That would explain why Kieran always looks away when she talks to him. What a control freak. He shouldn't have tried to run away. There was no reason for him to do that. If anything, this is the safest place for him right now. Either way, we're at square one with his aspects. Nothing changed when you let him absorb your aspect, Aster, and your feel-good cheery hugs didn't do much either, James. Was that necessary, Kat? Did she out the zebra, just like that? If that's true, then what a shitty remark to make, and the timing of it. He should punch her in that stupid snout so that I could throw the ice pack at her stupid face. I thought yesterday was indicative of the fact that the zebra was in no way to be messed with, but it looks like the typical atmosphere must revolve around the panther being the alpha bitch around here. I'm sorry, James. That's unacceptable behavior. I apologize. The zebra and the eagle share a knowing look, their brief smiles hinting at some unspoken camaraderie of times long past gone. It's a glimpse into the dynamic that likely defies this trio's interactions. It's alright. You're under a lot of stress seeing how you missed this one particular fox on the entrance exam. How did nobody notice him when he first came in? He should have stood out like a bear in a litter of lizards. You're both seeing his aspects. Saying that out loud, aspects, plural, is making my head spin. We'll figure it out. That's why we're here. Set up some advanced classes for us in the meantime so that we can do something aside from poking at Lucian every day. I can't help but feel a dumb joke coming up, but I know better than that. Considering the zebra's possible preferences, it might be wise to hold my tongue, or the panther might slash it away. It would be too inappropriate anyway, and it would be embarrassed to even attempt to say it. It's like I wish I were Fabian for a second. He'd crack that joke in less than a second. Your friends are outside waiting for you, Mr. Volps. What do you mean? Your roommate and an elite student? Mr. Flightros and Mr. Hin Hinara, I believe. They both came here to report you as missing since you took off in the middle of the night, and they thought that you might have been kidnapped. I was. By you. You mean bitch. Why haven't you sent them away? We already have our paws full as it is. Darius Flightros? As in Flightros Railways? You said a roommate and an elite. Who doesn't have the pin? Flightros, I offered his parents the option, but in reality he's not even good enough for our entry-level courses. When his test came back, I took it upon myself to look up what his results were, and that's not even close to getting him in, let alone study at the elite level. His father wanted him here, though, so now we're building our seventh arc. The revelation hits me like a thunderbolt, my eyes widening in shock. How could I not realize it? His name is plastered everywhere on the continent on trains, ticket machines, even on my student transport card. The name Flytros, a constant in our daily lives, so ubiquitous yet easily overlooked. All the wealth and influence that comes with that name, it's clearer now. He didn't get accepted into Tyrannon. He paid his way in. Or at least his father did. I wonder if Darius knows that. His previous outburst in the dorms makes so much more sense now. He can't keep up with his peers or the curriculum. Perhaps talking about such sensitive topics with Lucian here might not be the best course of action. I think we're far past sensitive topics. Need I remind you that we have a literal thousand reasons to worry about right now? The line getting in on his daddy's money isn't scratching the surface of the shirtstorm we're in. Hearing her curse surprises me. What a sudden deviation from her usual composure. She's freaking out about my aspects. Maybe I would too if I knew what I should be freaking out about. One or more aspects. What's the difference? Like, I've always been like this. Aspects or not. We need to focus on the current situation. Let's meet these two friends of his. That way we have all the involved parties in here. Precisely. She looks straight at me and with one bored breath presents herself like the others did before her. I am Catherine Verfulgens, headmistress of Tyrannon University. I teach advanced anatomy, and I am also the head doctor of the university. My favorite color is blue, and if you waste more of my time, you will live to regret it, Mr. Volps. She gets right to it. Her style of being is so frustrating. 
How can the others tolerate such pompous behavior? The panther calls up Kieran and tells him to let my friends in. The doors open and the wolf looks at me for a second, spotting my oversized swollen snout. I think he wanted to say something, his face filled with concern. But his eyes meet the floor, making way for Darius and Fabian to come in. What happened to you, Lucian? Yo, who did this? Their genuine care for me tugs at my shaky feelings. Before I get to say anything, though, the eagle catches Darius's attention. The lion turns to him, changing his stance and smoothing out his robes. Aster Havrun! Oh, 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 you are the Cardinal of Biscor University. I am Darius Flectros, and a big fan of yours. I read your book on the psychology of students. Wonderful work. Uh, thank you. How come you didn't apply to Biscor University then? My father wanted me to come here, although I begged him to no end to let me go to Biscor. Astra looks at Catherine, giving her a puzzled look, as if questioning what they talked about a few minutes ago. The panther shrugs at the eagle, unaware of what Darius mentioned about Biscor. Well, you're under good wings here. I am going to stay a while as a visiting professor for advanced cardinal literature and advanced psychology. That is incredible news! Fabian and I share a look of disdain towards the lion. Despite witnessing my swollen snout and my sudden disappearance from the dorm, he seems to have lost sight of the gravity of the situation, mesmerized by his idol's presence. I remind myself not to hold it against him too much. Encounters with one's heroes are rare, after all. Yet he's gushing over this Astra guy a little too much, and by the subtle way the eagle is stepping away from the lion, it seems that it bothered him a little. If you're done sucking up to the eagle's D, I think Foxy here has an explanation to give. The zebra's laughter booms in response to Fabian's comment as he leans in closer with an appreciative nod. Straight to the issue, I see. Darius clears his throat while looking around somewhat embarrassed, then gets closer to me, placing his paw on my shoulder. I am no longer sure if he cares about the situation anymore, or if he's trying to impress this Astra guy. He was smitten with him. How did this happen to you, Lucian? I woke up and some of your things were gone. You were not answering your phone, although I tried calling multiple times. I decided to come here and report you as missing. He was worried about you. So were you, you silly rabbit. I can see your hectic aspect looking at me with a crazed smile. And although as scary as it is, it's also somewhat sweet if I could call it that. Damn scary, though. I notice the teachers are visibly shaken by Fabian's aspect as well. They're looking at it with both curiosity and apprehension. Fabian comes over, leaning down and grabbing my paw into his. While I did expect him to care, I didn't think that he'd go as far as to hold my paw. He is more perceptive than I thought he was. It's like he knows that I need that. This whole thing feels like an exaggerated drama scene from the telenovelas my mom watches sometimes. All that's left is for everyone to start crying together at the same time. Which I start doing. I haven't been able to control myself since this craziness started. Darius is giving me so much calmness and focus while Fabian is putting angry thoughts of revenge in me towards whoever did my snout wrong. They're both so intense. Like, I'm absorbing them. Something's wrong. Something's terribly wrong. Two unique foxes are trying to force themselves out of the pack of aspects that have been surrounding me. Each one is trying to rip itself away from me, and the physical pain that they're both inflicting is unbearable. Oh, my fur. Please stop. It's like that one time. One is out. It's heading towards Darius. The lion looks at me, then grips my shoulder tighter. His claws come out and they sink in, but he retracts them once he feels they touch my skin. The other aspect has already escaped as well. The pain I got from Darius' claws might have helped me lose focus of it. Fabian's on the ground, kneeling, screaming in horrid pain. He turns to me, as if he's asking for help, but the chair that I'm standing on still seems to have petrified me in place. I look around the room, pleading for help, with my red, watery eyes. Both Fabian and Darius's aspects are each mixing with the escaped foxes. Either the three teachers are too stunned to do anything, or they can't do anything. I hear Fabian and Darius screaming their lungs out, their aspects twisting, now looking like this.
I didn't press anything and it just did that. A different light from the ceiling above. This isn't Miss Refulgison's office. Don't get up. What's going on? You kind of gave each of your friends a fox aspect. What? My paws go to my temples, pushing them away, trying to stop the throbbing headache that's blowing up in my head. Was I knocked out again? I remember my friends coming in and then... Oh, my fur. Are they all right? They're not dead, if that's what you mean by being all right. You're making things complicated, Mr. Volps. As if that's my actual goal here. Can she even hear herself? That stupid eye test has been the trigger for all of this, and I have no idea what's been going on since. It's like another world swallowed me whole, and I can't get out anymore. Fitting that everything's yet again related to my eyes. Why are these folks looking at me like this? I didn't do any of this on purpose. How could I? I barely know what an aspect is, let alone how it works or why it works. Fuck this. Fuck everything. Is... Is that Fabian next to me? Oh no. What did I do? Where's Darius? He's fine. Well, at least not as bad as the rabbit here. Darius is better equipped to deal with whatever it is that you did, which shouldn't be that surprising. He's fit enough to manage. How about mentally? He was already a mess. Whatever I did to my friends, I'm sure that it couldn't have been anything good. What about Fabian? Mr. Gennaro needs more attention from our medical staff. I will personally oversee his recovery. Although I am not fond of her looking over my friend, she is the head doctor here at Tyrannon. That should account for a lot. She couldn't have gotten here through nepotism, although she did get a bribe to take Darius in. But I have to believe that she knows what she is doing now. Fabian will be fine, I'm sure. If not, we can always just eat him. Fuck, I didn't think that. I didn't say that. My e eyes move left and then right, and soon they're all over the place. Where did that voice come from? Are you alright, Lucian? You seem startled. I'm not sure. This entire thing is messing with my head. Where's Darius? Is he doing okay? You've already asked that. I'll have to check you for a concussion. Mr. Flytros is in a private sector here. His father expects nothing less from Tyrannon if anything were to happen to his son. For a little shock? Shock or wild invading fox aspects aside, his father requested this type of treatment for his son in case of any medical occurrence. Why are we discussing this? It's not Mr. Flytros' fault his father is rich and demands these things. You're right. I had a chat with him earlier and he's outside of his father's ring of influence from what I gather. That sounds good, I think. Either way, I need to get to Darius to see if he is okay with my own eyes. This whole situation is a complete mess, so I could at least apologize to him for what I've done. Can I see Darius? I feel... The panther's look of exasperation cuts me dry. I'm getting to the point where she has had more than enough of me. I might not be able to see her aspect to know what she is going to say next but the intense stare and golden eyes tell a story by themselves. You feel fine. How unexpected, Mr. Volps. You've put two students in the infirmary, one of which is in a coma, but you feel fine. Why is it that you feel fine, but the other two needed immediate help or perhaps face certain death? Do you have something that you would like to share with us before you leave and wreak havoc on the entire university? The room is silent. The Panthers breath recovering from the waves of anger in her voice. It's true though, everything she's saying is true. I have to admit it, no matter how I look at it, I've been the sole reason for all the madness. I have... you could... I didn't mean to do any of this, okay? But you did do this. It's one thing for me to struggle to figure out what is happening to you. However, when you start affecting others, I have no choice but to have you contained until we know more about what you can and cannot do. Is that... Enough! I am done with this half-measures. He is dangerous. 
and I am a fool for not having done this the moment that I saw him. Until we know more, this is final. But... But what? If you were me right now, what would you do, Mr. Volps? I would have done away with such a threat the moment that I would have seen it. The fact that I got to do as much as I did, given the recent aspect invasion. She's right, and even I hate to admit it. Right now, I am a danger to anyone around me, perhaps even to myself. Sorry. Kid, it's not your fault. James is trying to help me not blame myself as much, but it is my fault. I did all of this even if I don't know exactly what it is I did. The panther gives out a short sigh, almost indistinguishable from her fuming breath. Her eyes lock onto mine, and for a brief moment I see her aspect. She wants to show it to me. There is an elderly panther around her, smiling. I've seen her somewhere. She's like the eye of a storm. The calmness is there, but there's so much fear and anguish surrounding that calmness. Yet, she has a perfect focus, like the perfect arrow slicing through the air to hit its target. You don't get to be the headmistress of Tyrannon by being anything less than excellence itself. I hear Fabian's shallow breathing, filling the silent room again. The sound creeps at me with every passing second, making me squirm in my bed. My stomach's had enough of it. I need to leave the room because I don't want to hear those strangled gasps anymore. I am sorry for everything I did. Please take me somewhere safe. I don't want to hurt anyone else. This, whatever this is, I don't want it. Make it go away, please. James comes over and hugs me, but this time I don't feel him equalizing the sadness from putting Fabian and Darius in here. Maybe he can't. Maybe he shouldn't. What was I thinking trying to run away? What good would it have done? How could my parents help? They never understood me my entire life. How could I be so stupid? So stupid. Get the fuck out of my head! Shit. I let those words slip out louder than intended, and now all eyes are on me. The zebra's warm embrace dissipates in seconds, as if I opened a window in the middle of a blizzard. What's going on? I... I don't know. There's someone or something saying stuff in my head. What kind of stuff? It told me to leave the uni when you caught me. I followed it. I thought to myself that it would look suspicious if I... They tried to leave, but when the voice said run, I did. It felt like I said it, but I, I know that it wasn't me. I couldn't stop myself, though. Miss Refulgensons looks at me while massaging one of her temples. Her expression ranged from annoyed to surprised to uncertain. It's starting to concern me that out of all the folk, she's losing focus. A voice. Just one? One. Or, or two. I think it was the same one, but it sounded different one time. I don't know. Right. Did it tell you to hurt anyone or yourself? Aside from telling me to eat Fabian? I can't possibly tell him that. Then everything they said about me being a TSG member would come true in this very moment. There is a time and a place to explain myself, and that's most definitely not now. No, nothing like that. Good. Good. James will escort you to my office. Aster should be there already. Do not let him out of your sight, James. I need to take care of something for Mr. Gennari. It shouldn't take long, and I'll be with you soon enough. Can I please see Darius? I want to know if he's okay. He's fine. He's awake and confused, but fine. You'll get to see him. Some other time. Some other time. They're right not to let me near him anyway. What if another one of my foxes makes a run for it? Yes, some other time. I'm about to leave my room with James, but I look back towards Fabian, realizing that his aspect is nowhere to be seen. We're walking towards the office and we reach it in a few minutes, at this pace, yet we're not saying a word to each other on the way there. I would like to say something, anything, but right now, I can't trust myself enough to do even the simplest of things. What I need is deep, long sleep. That sounds perfect. And to add to the promise of waking to a world where all of this has vanished, a realm where troubles are no more than shadows at the edge of a dream.
unlike the reality that I am in now, where those same shadows are lurking around me, slithering dark voices in my head telling me the most terrible of things, and having my life become akin to a pawn on a chessboard that others can move around as they please. There you are. Excellent news, James. News? And excellent as well? Funny. Listen here. I thought that there must be something unique about the fox, but not unheard of. What if it happened before? For someone to have multiple aspects? It was just a hunch, but I dug through a lot of the old archives in Tyrannum, and ancient, I would say. And look at this. His infectious excitement is getting to me. Another folk with more aspects? Please make it so. One good thing. Give me just one good thing, at least. This predates the Grand Unification. How does Tyrannum have something like this? Everything pre-unification was either burned or lost. I'm sure Catherine will rub both of her temples once she sees this. Can I see it as well? Astra's voice stiffens up along with his body as I move closer to him. I know he's not scared of me, but his weariness is palpable. Uh, it concerns you, so yes. There it is, right in front of me. A scroll of some sort, a fox drawn on it with a lot of shadows surrounding it, which I assume are aspects. It looks and smells old. It must have been hidden well for it to be in the state that it is right now. But the timing of it, the eagle found it right as we were about to meet up. I need to know more about that folk first. It could be my ticket out of this hellish ordeal. Who is that? From what it says here, which is still written in pre-unification carnivore language, this fox is supposed to be the one responsible for the grand unification. The one who tipped the scales in favor of the herbivores and the allies. My mouth's open and hanging. It's a fox. A fox, maybe just like me, responsible for the unification? Are you joking, Aster? What is this? A story for pups? I thought so too, but then there is a passage written here which translates to, If there were a thousand of me, nobody would be left to oppose me. That sounds like a straight-up villain, but most likely a badly written novel. It's a rough translation, so bear with me here. I don't spend my time learning dead languages. Everyone would stand together. That's what it says. If there were a thousand of me, everyone would stand together. What did I just say? What? Was a voice telling you that? Voice? He hears voices. The aspects must be talking to him. We've all had them speak to us at some point or another. When aspects talk to us, it's a private conversation and we know who's talking because we see each other. He hears stuff. Conventional thinking is no longer of any use here, Lucian. Is someone else talking through you? No, I don't think so. I knew what the text meant, but I knew I shouldn't. I didn't even know that there was a pre-unification carnivore language. It's not a secret, but it's also something that has been best left forgotten. Terrible things come from hearing this language out loud. The common language we all use now was established so that everyone can leave the past in the past. You could read it though and translate it as well. What else can you read from here? Astra spreads out the scroll on Miss Refulgence's desk. This feels wrong, like we're desecrating some holy place. We're going to get scolded for this, for sure once the panther's here. The initial excitement I had going pauses as it makes way for my loud grumbling stomach announcing the ob obvious. Perhaps he should eat first. I'll send for some food. What's that secretary's name again? Kai? Karen? It's Karen, sir. The wolf opens the door, giving away the fact that he was eavesdropping. He is the eyes and ears of Miss Refulgence, and it's obvious why. I didn't realize that he was behind the door, and neither did James and Aster. Kieran must know how to act in such situations. And Miss Refulgence might be the reason for that. Seeing as you were listening in, then you should know that we want to get some food as fast as possible. We have serious matters to discuss. I understand, but you see... You can't eat here, it's not allowed. Most I could bring you is tea. We need food. Cat will understand. I'm sure that she wouldn't. Her office is a sanctuary of knowledge. Eating here, using her desk as a cafeteria table would be the end of us in no uncertain terms. I love to follow up on that, but I can't let you eat here. Are you daft? We want food, so go get us some. The wolf is flustered enough as it is, 
but he is not budging. He's averting James's strong gaze, yet he is standing strong with his definitive answer. Would you all come eat in my office, please? It's next to this one. I will go and get the food myself for you. We all look at each other, dumbstruck by the simple solution. Astra packs up the scroll, and I notice James seems somewhat relieved that we aren't going through with our meals being eaten here. I doubt that it's fear that's keeping him in check. It looks more like respect to me. It's what I'm beginning to have for the panther. Yes. Right, that makes sense. Kieran leads the way to a smaller office. It's effective enough for what we need right now. The wolf checks his desk, moving things around and placing some in the drawers. He leaves out the wooden wolf bus on top of the folder shelf. I smile looking at it, Kieran winking at me. It has beautiful craftsmanship after all. I'll head to the cafeteria and get today's menu. Is that fine with everyone? No complaints, so the wolf is out of sight in a matter of seconds, assuring us that he'll return as soon as possible. Something tugs at me, as if there is a missing piece on all of this. Shouldn't we have Miss Refulgence here? We can fill her in when she's done with the infirmary. Let's get as much information as we can from this. Can I get some water, though? There are a few bottles in the fridge, I think. The break lasted longer than expected and everyone slowed down. I haven't had a moment's peace in such a long time, but I am also determined to figure out things out. If I can translate this, maybe it will fix something about the situation. Let's get started, then. I agree. Let's have some fun. No, not right now. Not, not this again. I don't think this is the right time to do this. What do you mean? You translated a key part of the text. We're here to do this exact thing. There's someone else talking to me right now. Lucian? I said that there's someone else talking to me. Is there something wrong, kid? Talk to us. I am. Can you hear me? Nope. What? Muted. Who are you? I'm your best friend. Stop messing around. Let me talk. Where's the fun in that? Fun? This isn't fun. Where are you? Right behind you. I turn around expecting to see something else other than the wall. Now you look like a crazy fox. Congratulations. Get out of my head. And why would I do that? Please, please, leave me alone. Well, all right. Now that you ask so nicely. Lucian. Yes, C can you hear me? Of course we can. You zoned out and turned around looking for something. Saying something right now will dig an even deeper hole for me at this point. And I am so scared of what that panther will do if I tell her what's happening to me. But if I keep it in any longer, I'm exhausted with everything, that's all. Let's wait for Kat then. I'm sure that we'll figure it all out once she's here. And where's that wolf with the food? How far away is the cafeteria? We'll get it sooner or later. Makes no difference. Lucian, are you capable of translating more now? Are you? Why aren't you gone already? What? No, not you. I was talking to... To whom? Please, let me go. I want to sleep and forget. Please. Both teachers exchange glances. I'm not sure what's going on in my head anymore. There's so much noise. Wanna hear a funny story? So there's this fox, right? And he's going insane. The end. My scream fills a small office as my mind lets go of my consciousness. I realize that I'm having an out-of-body experience, looking down at the chaotic figure that's screeping and screeching clawing at the wall, snarling at its own paws. I'm going through a full-blown meltdown, losing it completely, an uncontrolled mess reminiscent of a mythical yet rabid elder from a bygone era we all became the folk we are today. I deserve to be committed to a psychiatric ward, a place where I wouldn't be able to hurt anyone. The ray of hope arrives in the form of a black panther, her paw already armed with her trustworthy syringe. Her movements are precise, and as I feel the cold flow of the medicine pushing into my bloodstream, I see the crazed animal that is me slow itself down. 
Yet a moment later, its wild roar draws out their defensive stance and the three teachers that leap towards Miss Refulgence doesn't reach her. As she vanishes, they drift out of my own body, vivid flashes of violent blood, red teeth forcing themselves in my mind's eye with each. I get jabbed again with a smaller syringe, but I am not giving in, still desperate to rip the meat out of the folk around me. Failing that, I try to bite my own fingers, but James grabs my mouth and holds it in place. Astro immobilizes my arms, gripping them tight with his talons and sinking behind me. Finally paralyzing my movements, and then the tears start flowing in between the hoarse sounds bellowing from my throat. I am no longer a spectator. My color eyes are now shining bright. I begin the panther to do. I struggle to hold myself together as my muscles tense harder, cursing my inability to control them. There is nothing left that I can do, nothing to let this anger out. I think of Darius, Fabian, and Atlas, and my parents. And then finally, a few words escape from my ma white frothing mouth. Help me! Have I mentioned how much I hate when visual novels do that, where it just, like, auto-moves on its own? <sighs> Anyways, thank you for reading. There's more to come at Tyranon University. This is the end of Chapter 4. We're already working hard on Chapter 5. Remember to support us on Patreon for more high-quality visual novels and join the community at our Discord server. Finally, thank you to everyone who made this build possible. Please don't do that auto-scrolling, forwarding thing again. It is very annoying. Even when just reading normally, it is very annoying. And by normally, I mean like to myself, not recording. I know it's being done for dramatic effects, but still. It is very, very annoying. <sighs> Anyways. So. I guess my initial thoughts were perhaps the whole uh, unleashing an aspect onto Fabian and Darius. It was sort of his way of imparting a piece of himself so that they are able to better cope with what's going on at school. Um, because he considers them friends and they're um, like being like, concerned about him and stuff like that. Uh, and maybe that was his way of saying, like, here, instead of equalizing you, how about I impart a piece of myself to you to help you? You know, like, be better, I guess. But this also maybe released a piece of the fox that was always hiding, maybe his actual aspect or like the primary aspect who has been hidden for this entire time and is now finally being able to talk because he imparted two pieces of himself. Mm, maybe, he, I know I'm pretty sure somebody is already thinking it, but maybe he is a reincarnation of the fox that was on the scroll. Maybe he is, um, like, or maybe not a reincarnation. Maybe sort of like a, uh, what is the word that I'm thinking of? Maybe the scroll wasn't so much detailing what happened um, with the grand unification, but maybe what was going to happen, sort of like a prophecy, and he is the prophesized fox that is apparently housing thousands of aspects and that is able to release them onto people and sort of I guess well do something with them um I'm not sure if it's a negative but I think maybe perhaps it is because like I said yeah like maybe he him imparting an aspect to Darius and Fabian specifically after knowing you know that Darius himself is basically not even supposed to be there um and then with fabian basically looking kind of crazed and sort of still struggling he he knows that his friends are struggling so he imparted a piece of himself to sort of help with it i guess i don't know um i don't know your guess is as good as mine uh my guess though is that whatever it is that is talking to him is his actual aspect or at least it is the aspect speaking to him. Or perhaps maybe it is his past life. I'm pretty sure that one of you is going to make like an avatar 
reference and saying like, oh, it's his past life speaking to him. Blah, blah, blah. Um, what else? Mm. It is also interesting to see how these people's aspects work. For example, the zebra having like a calming effect or maybe not how they work, but sort of their primary, um, how they primarily work. For example, again, like the zebra having a calming effect. Um, the I, I wanted to call him a griffin, but he's an eagle, I guess. So the eagle and Darius both having sort of the ability to use their aspects to be able to figure out whether or not you're lying. Um, and I guess Miss Refulgence being able to use her aspect in order to cause fear or to cause um, a sort of like um like to sort of rein you in and i'm i guess as a principal well not as a principal as the the headmistress of a university of of a prestigious university of course she would have to have some sort of ability to sort of rein in the students and the teachers and everyone else like to make sure that they're working properly and especially because it is the most prestigious university i guess in this continent or whatever it is so to have the ability to impose her will on someone through fear, I guess, is useful. Um, uh, so my guess is that most of these people have some sort of like primary ability aside from being equalizers or their ability helps in the equalization process. Um, the zebra helping Lucian here sort of calm down for a while. Um, I already forgot what the eagle's name is, but his, I guess, using it to sort of figure out what if a person is lying and then being able to suss them out and calming them down, I guess. I don't know. It's, I don't know. And Ms. Ref I suppose that Miss Refulgence's aspect would allow her to sort of quell anything that is going on with the student or at the school by sort of imposing her indomitable will on the students and faculty and whatever. Um, which again goes to the whole thing like um if you have the ability to sort of equalize people, you can use it for both good and bad. You can use it to help uh calm down people during like a natural disaster, helping them sort of um, go from a panicked state where they are unable to do anything to, you know, calming down, to being able to rationally think and, you know, survive. But if you do it with, say, again, maybe a group of people who are dissatisfied with what's going on, you know, protesters, then you can basically squash that type of movement by sort of whittling away at these people's wills to do anything and sort of pacifying them in a way. But yeah. Anyways, so what are your thoughts? And thank you all for watching slash listening. If you would like to play Light My Way or stay up to date with it, you can do so by going down into the link in the description or the Twitter page that is relevant to what this is, uh, which should have a direct link to the visual novel on HIO, or you can just go to HIO and download it there. And Patreon, they have a Patreon, which I will be linking down in the description. And they do have a Discord in case you want to join it and talk about the visual novel. Um, but yeah, so I guess that's it for now. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.